Hello and welcome to Going to Every Bookstore in Austin, episode three. If you are unfamiliar with this series, I'm attempting to go to every single bookstore in Austin. So far, I've been to nine bookstores and two different libraries, and today we're going to five more places. I am so excited to continue exploring every single bookstore in my city. It has been so long, way too long, since I did an episode in this series, and it feels good to be back. This might be my favorite series. It is so, so fun to explore all the bookstores in my city and I've almost been to all of them. Today we're going to five bookstores and the first one is Black Pearl and I've actually been to Black Pearl books before. When I went the first time they were just in the back of a shop and now they have a new location. They have their very own full bookstore so I'm so excited and so happy for them that they were able to grow to now having their own store. I don't know, it just makes me like so giddy and so excited. Not that I like know them personally at all, but just seeing bookstores grow makes my heart so happy. And Black Pearl is a black and women owned bookstore. And of course it's an independent bookstore and I believe you can also shop from them online. So if you don't live in Austin, you can still order from their website. So I'll put it in the description or on the screen now if you want to support them. I am outside the building right now and it looks pretty big. So I'm really excited to see what it looks like inside. First, I headed to the nonfiction section where I saw Crying in H Mart. I have heard so many great things about this memoir. It's about growing up Korean American and forging your own identity. Men, things explained to me. I thought that was such a funny title and it sounded like a really important book on silencing women and why men assume they know things women don't. Then I went to the fiction section. They had a lot of popular book talk books that I recognize. Hook, Line, and Sinker I actually just finished and it was so good. It's friends to lovers and takes place in a little fishing town. They also had a whole LGBTQ plus section and actually really want to read more LGBTQ books. So let me know if you have any recs. Kane's Jawbone is a puzzle book where the pages are in the wrong order and you have to put them in the right order. I low-key want to get it and try to solve it, but I'm scared that I never will. The Thursday Murder Club sounds so good. I've had my eye on this book for a little while. It's a murder mystery that is being solved by a group of senior citizens in their 80s. The Authenticity Project, haven't heard of this book before, no idea what it's about, but the cover is so fun and colorful, which really caught my attention. Same with this book, Honor, a gorgeous cover. Sally Rooney, I read Normal People by Sally Rooney and really loved it, so I definitely wanna read more by her. Then I went to the YA section. Blackout is a book about black teen love, and it's actually written by six authors, which is so interesting. I'm really intrigued that it was written by so many people. I just got out of Black Pearl, and it was so cute inside. They had a little sitting area. Area. It was adorable. It was like cool art. Now I'm like, hmm, after I buy a book, should I hang out here and like sit and read? And oh my gosh, I completely forgot to get a video of it, but they had a section called, what was it called? Community section? I don't know, something like that. But basically, if you see a book you like, you can take it. And then next time you come, you can bring one of your own books to put back. So you can like trade books. And I love that they have a ton of popular books, but they also have a big focus on minority authors, minority stories. They had a whole women's study section which I really loved. And they have tote bags and bookmarks that are really cute. But I ended up getting one book. I got The Silent Patient. I have heard so many good things about this book. Have not read it yet. I actually really don't know anything that it's about except that I believe it's a murder mystery. I actually started reading the back of the cover and I read the first sentence and it really hooked me. Alicia Berenson's life is seemingly perfect until one night when her husband Gabriel returns home late from work and Alicia shoots him five times in the face and then and never speaks another word. That is really an intense way to start a summary of a book, but it hooked me. So the silent patient is what I got. I also almost, almost, almost got the book by the book is what it's called. It sounded so cute. It's a romance between a girl who works at a publishing house and then the guy is an author and I almost got it, but it said on Goodreads that it's the second book in a series. It kind of sounded like it could be a standalone, but I wasn't sure. So I just didn't get it anyway, but I do now want to check out the first book in that series and then come back for by the book. Next, we're going to Malvern Books. I actually used to live right next to Malvern Books and I never went, so I'm excited to now go because I'm now into reading, but I'm not sure I'm gonna find anything there that I like. It says that it's a bookstore and community space that specializes in visionary literature and poetry from independent publishers. And yeah, I think it's really cool that they focus on indie publishers, but I don't know if I'm going to be into visionary literature. Either way, it'll still be fun to look around. 
Malvern Books was much bigger than I thought it was gonna be, and they had a little recommendation cards that people wrote, and I think it's so cool when bookstores do that. On the front table, this book really caught my eye. I loved the cover illustration. It's an illustrated memoir about living with borderline personality disorder. And then here are a ton of books that I thought had really, really cool covers. Margaret and the Mystery of the Missing Body is a queer and trans coming of age story that also deals with disordered eating. The Women of Weird Tales is 13 tales written by women that range from fantasy to horror to science fiction. This is a book of poems and I loved the repetition of the tiger on the cover. Ugh, I love illustrated covers like this one. Are you kidding me? Look at this cover. Look at this cover, it is so cool. The Whispering House got kind of bad reviews on Goodreads when I looked it up, but again, I like the cover. The Flowers of Evil is a book of poems that shocked the literary world in the 19th century in France because of its portrayal of lesbian love. I love that all of these books are so unique and tell such unique and important stories. They also had a graphic novel section, which is just really fun to look at and to flip through all of the pages. I just got out of Malvern Books. I didn't end up getting anything. They had a whole poetry section. They had a graphic novel section, which is really fun. They had nonfiction fiction. They also had these $5 bins that had poetry and prose books, which is cool. If you're into that, you can get some for $5. And the covers were so pretty. I swear, just like every book I was pulling out the shelf was gorgeous. And yeah, I literally, like I said, used to live by that bookstore and would walk by it for years. So I'm glad I finally got to go in. Next, I plan to go to two books bookstores in Georgetown. Georgetown is a suburb of Austin and I've been to Georgetown once before and it's so so cute so I'm excited to explore their book scene. Okay it is a book shopping day two and like I said today we're going to Georgetown Texas. Our first stop is Larkin Owl which looks like a really cute bookstore and it has, looks like it has like a coffee shop or like a bistro or something like that inside and yeah I'm excited and then the second place we're going to to is the secondhand prose bookstore which is inside of the Georgetown library and I've been to one used bookstore inside of a library before and it was a huge hit I found tons of really great books that I literally would have bought full price but because they were used I think it was like a dollar or two for each of the books that I got so I don't know the prices at this one but I'm hoping we have just as big of a success and oh my gosh I forgot to say I'm meeting my friend Alexis there she has been in one of my vlogs before but yeah she's a really good friend of mine she also has her own YouTube channel she makes mostly fun fashion content but also like vlogs and other lifestyle content so I'll have her links below if you guys want to check her out but before we go to Georgetown I would love to introduce you guys to the sponsor of today's video Polygents. Polygents is a research academy that provides students one-on-one -on -one mentorship from top tier academics and practitioners. And as a high school student, you can receive mentorship on a huge variety of topics from fashion history to psychology to astrophysics and a ton of other really, really cool topics. And through this very personalized program, you can turn your passion into a super cool project like a podcast or an app or even a book. And it's just such a cool program to really deep dive into a topic that you're really passionate about with the help of a mentor who is an expert in that field. And this would look great on your college applications just saying for example one student named Nathan created a children's science book on appetite and wrote a research paper to go along with it and his published children's book you can purchase on Amazon which is so so cool if I was currently a student I would love to do a project that also allowed me to write a book in the process such a cool way to explore and delve into a really interesting topic so use the link in my description to get $250 off your polygents program and get paired with an expert mentor in your industry of choice to make your passion project a reality. Okay, let's go book shopping. Lark and Owl was so cute inside. They had such fun decor and I love the all wood bookshelves. And within like five seconds of being there, Alexis grabbed People We Meet on Vacation, which makes me so happy because I love that book and all of Emily Henry's books. A brush with love. It's cheesy, but I love the toothpaste on the cover. Then we headed to the fiction section. This Great Gatsby cover is so cool. I have never seen this cover before. Conversations with Friends is now a TV series, so I really want to read the book. My Summer Darlings has okay reviews on Goodreads, but the cover is so cool and neon. And then they had a ton of tote bags and bookmarks and these really cool shirts. 
This book, to be honest, caught my attention because they're by the pool on the cover and it's summertime, but it is a horror book about a calculating black girl who manipulates her way into the lives of her friend's wealthy white adoptive family, which sounds super interesting, kind of like Get Out vibes. The Cruel Prince, I actually didn't realize it was fantasy, but everyone raves about this book, so I do need to read it at some point. Bridge to Terabithia, what a childhood throwback. I never read the book, but I loved the movie. They also had this cute bistro that I'll have to come back and eat at sometime. Then we went to the used bookstore inside of the Georgetown Library. It was on the second story, and they had a ton of books. James Patterson, I feel like I always see his books at used bookstores and Twilight, I can always find Twilight at a used bookstore. I thought these Susan Mallory books looked really fun and summery and they had the entire Little Bridge Island series. Each book is a standalone and they all take place on the same island, which sounds so cute and good for summer. They also had this huge automobile collection, which I thought was really cool. And look how cute this Betty Crocker cookbook is. Hello, we just Hi. went to Lark and Owl. This is Alexis. Hi, nice to see you again or meet you. <laughs> yes, yeah, and we got books in Lark and Owl. Lark and Owl was really cute. It was, it was so cute and they had yeah. all the good books. Yeah, it was sure. really big, which yeah. I was surprised. And they yeah. had a bistro, which was cute. I got um, Every Summer After. I have heard of this book a bunch, but I actually don't know anything about it except that it's summery. So I feel like that's kind of like the best way to go in books. Just yeah, like... and the girl at the checkout said it was amazing. So. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Must mean it's amazing. No, she was really hyping it up to yeah. me, so that made me excited. The little tagline says, six summers to fall in love, one moment to fall apart, a weekend to get it right. So it takes place, I assume, over six summers. And then the lady at the checkout said it's friends to lovers. So I feel like that's cute when they're like friends first. So they like really yeah, know each other. Cute. And then I got people we meet on vacation, which I heard of from Allie. So yes. that's an exciting one. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. I feel like it's going to be similar to this one. I know. That's what I was thinking. I was like, I feel like these these are like go together yeah yeah they're like good books because this one cute. takes place over it says 10 summers on the back okay and this one's six summers and then that one is oh, friends wow. and they have like a falling out and yeah then, yeah they get so back to yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of it's course. right. Yeah. I always wonder when in like book videos, I'm like, should I say like, yeah, they have a falling out and they get back together? But because of course they do. But right. I don't know. It feels like Depends a spoiler. On the person. Yeah. So okay. cute. And I think Emily Henry is one of my like yeah. top three authors. So. Yeah, definitely. I've heard of her a lot. So I hope it's going to be good. And then we went to, um, it was a used bookstore inside the Georgetown Library, which was very cool. And it was all donation based, which I did not know before we went in. They had yeah. some like collector's books that you could, they had prices for those. But other than that, you just donate whatever you want. So I got Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. so cute. I know. I just saw the cover and I was like, the colors yeah. and like, the squiggles. I know absolutely nothing about it except the cover is cool. Yeah. And so I bought it. <laughs> yeah, and it's it seemed cool. I gave her like a five dollar bill and she seemed surprised. Like she was like, Oh, do you want change? And I was like, That yeah, seemed like a good price. I know, I right? Know. For a book, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that is all the book shopping we're doing yes. today. But tomorrow I'm going to the library to get some books. So that'll be my yeah. day three for this video. Bye. Bye. Hello, I just got back to my apartment and I actually just read the summary of the book and I'm glad I did because it is not what I expected at all. It is about a woman named Alex and she has a babysitter who is a young black woman and one day the babysitter is in a store with Alex's child who is white and the babysitter Amira gets accused of kidnapping the white child and a bystander films everything and so yeah, I don't know. It sounds like a really, really powerful book on race and class and I actually looked it up on Goodreads and Jack Edwards whom I love gave it five stars and said it deals with the complicated ideas and nuances of race and privilege in a writing style that is so accessible that you forget your reading so that sounds like such a good review speaking of Goodreads friend me on Goodreads I will friend you back I love friending all of you guys because when I look up a book I can see all of y'all's reviews and I read them like I read every single person who's I'm friends with review on such a fun age and I feel like if you watch my videos then we probably have a somewhat similar taste in book so I really trust y'all's opinions and reviews so I don't know I think it's so cool when I'm looking at books to see what all of you guys think about the book anyway that is it for today but then I'll see you in 24 hours my time but like three seconds of your time for day three 
It's day three and today we're going to the library. And my other two episodes in the series, I went to a different library. So today I was like, what if not only do I go to every bookstore in Austin, but also every library in Austin. So I put my books on hold for a different library that I've never been to. It is the North Village branch. And I just looked up how many branches does the Austin Public Library System have? And the answer, I'll give you a second to guess. I'll give you a second because I don't think you're gonna guess it. Okay, have you got your guess? The answer is 21. What? I'm sorry, what? One city? 21 branches of the Austin Public Library in Austin. I have got a book to return and I've got two books on hold, so let's go do it. The first thing I did at the library was return It's Not Summer Without You, which is the second book in the Summer I Turn Pretty series. Then I checked out these two books that I had on hold. Then I did some exploring. The library had a lot of really cool little nooks and they had a ton of books in the YA section that I thought sounded really good. The Queen's Assassin is a YA fantasy romance about a deadly assassin, a mysterious apprentice, and the country they are sworn to protect. Teen Killer sounds so cool. It's about a girl framed for the murder of her best friend, so she joins a secret society of teen assassins to avoid a life behind bars, which just sounds so, so interesting. Love and Gelato, I'm listening to the audiobook right now and I'm excited to read the other two books in the series. I'll probably get them as audiobooks as well. I just got out of the library and I picked up Will Always Have Summer by Jenny Han and As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson. And both of these are the last books in their series. This is the last book in the Summer I Turn Pretty series. And this is the last book in A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. This one is murder mystery and YA. And then this one is YA romance and such a perfect summer series. So I'm really excited to read both of these. I'm definitely gonna be reading both of these this month since they're library books and I'll have to return them. But yeah, I'm also kind of sad to read these two books because they are both the last books in their trilogies which means the series will be over. The library itself was super cute. They had a sitting area that I thought was adorable. I definitely want to go back and check out a book and then go sit in the sitting area and like hang out and read. I think that'd be so fun. And they had a section of books for purchase which was pretty cool. I did not know that that was going to be there. I didn't recognize any of the books but definitely would be fun to like go back and check up every now and again on what books they have for sale and that is all of the five bookstores we have for today oh i went to five bookstores and got five books total let me know if you guys have read any of these books and which ones i should prioritize reading which ones are the best that i need to read asap i'm honestly excited for all of them and yeah i would love to do another video in this series there are a few bookstores in austin that i haven't gone to yet but it's gonna come to an end soon we're, we're running out of austin bookstores so if anyone lives in austin or the surrounding austin area and has any bookstores recommendations that I haven't been to yet please let me know all right and with that I will see you guys next week bye